Greetings. I'm Jay Michaels. I'm a professor of media culture and communication, and I have been clocking sci-fi, fantasy, and horror films for nearly 50 years. And I have a story to tell you before we speak to these two amazing individuals. When I was 12 and I attended the first annual Famous Monsters of Filmland convention in New York, uh, I wandered into a room that had a widescreen TV. No, they didn't have the huge cinematic things that you see at convention. Now, this is, this is some time ago. And on that widescreen TV, they were playing to a select audience an episode of a TV series that I had never seen before. And it was this, this hugely curly haired man with a multicolored scarf and floppy hat offering jelly babies to individuals. And he was battling a potato-like creature called a Suntaran. And I thought I would just watch it closely and then run into one of the other rooms. I sat down and watched every episode that they played in that room wrapped in absolute fascination. And from that moment on, I became a fan of Doctor Who. Doctor Who started in November of 1963, and it's still going. They are up to, correct me if I'm wrong, the 13th Doctor. We are soon to have the 14th Doctor. And if you don't know what I'm talking about in terms of how many doctors you have, uh, then, then you've been missing out on some amazing entertainment. But I'm not going to blather on because I have two individuals who I'm going to bend their ear and, and absolutely torture them because they created... A, a, a documentary on this amazing, amazing character and, and their own journey. And I can't wait to hear all about it. Welcome, Matthew and Vanessa. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to meet at the festival, at the, at the Boston Sci-Fi Film Festival, which happens fe February 15. You can go to bostonsci-fi.com for tickets and other information. And this will be streaming on the new Boston Sci-Fi channel that will be on Filmocracy, and that will be inaugurated around the same time. Matthew Jacobs, Vanessa Yuli, wonderful to meet you. <laughs> How are you? Hello. Thank you. Thanks for having us. It's Vanessa Yule. Like Yule. Yule. It's like Yule Scottish. It's oh. Scottish. Yule. And that's why I'm from the Bronx. I saw an E. I just got to pronounce Yule. it. Yule. It's all right. Lots of people do that. Oh, oh, good. Well, at yeah. least I'm the majority on, on that. I much. did it when I think I first. Vanessa Yule, I, I welcome. Tell me about your documentary. I'm I'm all ears. Well, and the story is about uh, Matthew Jacobs, who's right over there. Uh, for me, he's over there, and he's the writer of the Eighth Doctor. And this is when it was a it almost became an American TV show in the wilderness years. So in 1996, there's a Doctor Who TV movie that Matthew Excellent. wrote, and it almost became an American TV show. And it kind of didn't really work out very well. And fans got very angry and they got very angry at Matthew. And so he stayed away from the Doctor Who fandom. And uh, this the documentary is about uh, the two of us. I'm following him as he goes back into the American Doctor Who fandom. I'm expecting, or we're both expecting, you know, pitchforks and angry fans. And, and we do get angry fans, um, but really it's um, kind of how this community uh, really em embraces Matthew. He has to dig deep into kind of his past and figure out this sort of um, deep and ambivalent connection that he has with Doctor Who. His father was an actor in the original series and we get into his relationship with his father who was in the, the gunfighters and, um, you know, it's a moving and funny story. People are amazed at how uh, are touched by Matthew's vulnerability and places where we go. It uh, talks about kind of the nature of fandom and and why we we love the things that we love. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's 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 a great journey. It's a uh, it's a story about us and friendship and also independent filmmaking. So, and Matthew, you 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 want to you want to add? Well, oh, actually, that? Vanessa, I'm going to grab you because up. Matthew. Oh, I'm going to corner you in a moment. Oh my good, <laughs> um, Vanessa. Okay, now now we see why Matthew's here. Why are you here? Why is this important to you? Well, this is my uh, feature debut, my first uh, you know uh, feature documentary, first film I've I've edited. 
Um, so that's kind of a big deal for us. Um, it's been a long journey. It's been a journey of, uh, you know, it, yes, this is pure independent filmmaking. And so we came from, you know, it was just the two of us. You see, we are the production company. We are, we are everything. We're the little, the little, we call it, we're the little movie that could, yeah. little documentary that could. And With co-directors, um, co-producers, we've, yes. we've kind of been making films together since 2010 on and off and so then yeah and now we have distribution we're getting out there we're gonna be in boston we're super excited for the sci-fi film festival and there's gonna be a uh or the opening film and then there's gonna be a, a gala afterwards time and uh, ball. oh yes. of course the time travelers ball i definitely will be there for that and we're gonna be judges so there is like so much to be excited about jay it's just so much that's great were, were you at, were you at uh Whovian before this I knew about Doctor Who from my childhood. I, my dad loved Doctor Who and that same thing, the guy with the curly hair and what's this phone booth. So I have very nostalgic memories. And Matthew and I, as you mentioned, we'd worked together before on, I worked on a couple of his other feature films that he'd done. And he never really mentioned that he wrote Doctor Who. And then it was after the 50th when he just started getting invited to conventions and, and I was like, why are you being invited to Doctor Who conventions? And he's like, well, I wrote the eighth doctor. And yeah, I freaked out. And that was kind of sort of the start of it, really, of why we decided to do the documentary. Uh, okay, thank you. That's it it, it, it almost sounds it almost sounds like my start with it. You just you've heard of it, there it is, and then kaboom. <laughs> it's been kaboom, yes. I think that's great. Matthew. I loved the Eighth Doctor. I have to tell you, I remember seeing the movie, and it's funny. I I didn't know it was the American version, if you will. I just looked at it and said, "Wow, they're getting very gritty." And, and so, <laughs> of course, um, I thought you were very clairvoyant, actually, as I remember the Eighth Doctor. You're very clairvoyant because a lot of what you gave to that Doctor, we see in David Tennant, we see in uh, the the current manifestations, if you will. So, I think yeah. uh, if you could be accused of anything, it's clairvoyancy. Well, yeah course, what I what would so. a time traveler know tell me about you matthew tell me about your your journey in the tardis well my dad took me to the um <clears throat> to the um taping they were mostly taped um of um, the gunfighters which was a william hartnell episode first doctor episode uh, was a story they used to do four half hours so i went did that when i was about 10 years old and that really kicked off a lot of stuff. From there, I personally, I went on and worked for the same director about a year or so later in a classic serial called Point Counterpoint as a child actor. And that sort of got me going. And then, um, you know, 40 odd years later, I'm, I was in, um, I, I was, I'm living in um, Marin and I'm living in, um, you know, sort of, I'm, I, I'm making, American stuff. I'm making Young Indiana Jones, Lassie, you know, The Emperor's New Groove, things like that. And then around about 2007, the bottom dropped out of the uh, TV movie. Um, and, and generally there was a depression. Um, uh, I started teaching and I was teaching at um, University of Texas at Austin and a bit at UCLA and, you know, City College, San Francisco, and finally, Academy of Art University, which is where I met Vanessa, who was doing her postgrad, and she was already a very accomplished documentary filmmaker who worked with Dylan Glockler, um, and the two of them were kind of a team, and I'd just come off of a movie called Boxing Day, which I'd made with um, ben Bernard Rose and Danny Houston, and I was acting in that, and uh, um, that had played Venice and it was very exciting because we'd made it for next to no money and uh, and it had done very well. So I took that principle and seeing this wonderful documentary team um, uh, sort of married myself, if you like, to them. And um, and they and we made a, a mocky docudrama called Your Good Friend. And then we made another film called Bar America. And then meanwhile, I was doing other stuff and then. And then like, just like Vanessa said, you know, sort of we were meeting for coffee once and, and Doctor Who Am I kind of had its genesis 
um, through really our friendship. Most films are born um, out of a desire to, you know, say something important or uh, express a definite emotion or, so or something like that. You know, there's something like that. But this was, this was, huh, didn't know that about you. Let's go and explore this. And it might be entertaining because it sounds like they're going to hate you. Um, and, and, uh, and they didn't really, well, they did. So really the journey is me being a bit of a dickhead really going into this world and not really being a very likable person, I think. Um, so, so it's a bit of a journey of um, uh, what you call it when people get better, you know? So, so hopefully catharsis. by the end of the story, yeah, pardon? Catharsis. Catharsis, yeah. yeah there's, there's a, a redemption. There's a bit of a redemption a in there. Arc. Yeah. And so a then... regeneration in the vein oh, of uh, Doctor Who. Matthew regenerates. You That's know, right. People, people go on the, it's a journey into fandom. Literally, I become... I, I'm part of this family, and uh, and as such, that's the drama. You know, that's the sort of entertaining journey here, and hopefully, it's one that you can identify with, regardless of whether or not you know anything about Doctor Who. Um, Do you you certainly learn a lot about Doctor Who along the way, but it's not vital to know about Doctor Who to enjoy the film, which is why it got picked up in the UK, why it's been picked up by Gravitas here and comes out on the 28th of March. I think that's that's the one of the allures of, of it, going back to, to my introduction to it. I knew nothing of it because in, in those days, uh, a British television, if, if you're lucky, it was on channel nine or channel yes. 11 at three o'clock in the morning or something like that. And for me to, to get to know it and to understand it from nowhere and become a rabid fan, uh, it says everything about it. Um, Absolutely. And now it's going to be on Disney Plus. Really? Yeah, oh, Disney oh. Plus have have um, have uh, you know bought into the franchise, and it's going to be right up there with Marvel and Star Wars. The new series, not the our documentary. Series. The new series, yeah, not our <laughs> documentary. Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe it be will so be. Lucky. Maybe, but we don't know. Oh, that's Who great. Knows? Well, I'm glad I have Disney Plus. There you go. I have it for Marvel movies, so now I have it for. Uh, for Doctor Who as well. Now, now, be, before we started taping, you you said that that people didn't like your Doctor, didn't like the. I had a great time with that movie. That it's fun things. now. I yeah. enjoy it too. What yeah. What did you find was the hurdle? What uh, What 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 was the disconnect for fans? I think anytime something is taken off the air for a while, like Star Wars was out of circulation for a while, then somebody comes back and you know. George, very extreme, made prequels. Everybody kind of got on his back about that because he starts to make choices with something that people have already met, have their preconceptions about. And in my case, the preconceptions were that the doctor is 100% alien and I made him half human. They really didn't like that. Oh, um, and then they also didn't like the fact that I had a romantic relationship between him and Grace Hog, Dr. Grace Holloway. Not that they, you know, did had sex or anything like that. It was just some very- They kissed, kissed three kissing. times, Matthew. They, they kissed, kissed against a three tree. Times. Nowadays, but that- their nowadays kisses that, are that, pure that, joy. <laughs> their kisses, the first is the kiss, you know, I know who I am. And she's done that and he just has to celebrate that. And then by the end, the kiss is a kiss more in the vein of what became Rose, which was the first. <laughs> Um, you know, the first of the new doctors, um, Chris Eccleston's, you know. I, so, I was going to say the relationship yeah. between uh, uh, David Tennant's doctor and Rose was so similar. That's why I say you were so clairvoyant. Yeah, well, we were the first. I mean, it was, you know, Philip Siegel, really, who, who was the um, mastermind behind the eighth doctor. Um, and I mean, he's truly a producer showrunner. And, and uh, you know, it was his intention really to make the Doctor more romantic. And I think that got picked up um, overall. And yeah, I mean, you have to, otherwise you're losing a massive part of the audience. It used to be very much a boys show, you know, and then and now, um, and then with Rose, with Chris Eccleston, it became more of a kind of a show that women could get into as well. 
Well, there's there's the thing. I I, I do know it, it started supposedly as a kid's show, uh, but the best kids shows grow up with their audience. And, and Doctor Who certainly grew up so that now, now uh, when I was 12, it was brilliant. And now that I'm not 12, it's <laughs> brilliant. Uh, and, and your doctor certainly showed that. The doctor grew up in that. And it being a TV movie as opposed to the serial that it was, um, there was so many aspects of that doctor that, that said, okay, Doctor Who is growing up. Uh, there, there was, and Paul is like, isn't he Vanessa? He's like the sort of Yoda in in the documentary. We 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 go to him. He gives me advice. Paul Paul and, McGann played Paul the McGann. Eighth Doctor yeah. from like with Nail and I, and he's 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 been in many other things. But what's great is that actually there's a resurgence of the Eighth Doctor now. There's kind of like a whole movement online to bring him back to have his spinoff series, which is great. Because he's cool. He's, like, he's been going all the time on Big Finish constantly since 2000 and since, since, the, since about 2000 or something. Prior to it being brought back in 2005, the eighth Doctor was holding the torch for Doctor Who in audio dramas on Big yes, Finish. Yes, yes, that I knew. And, and he was very prominent uh, at the 50th anniversary in terms of documentaries and things there. And it was quite brilliant because the, he was there for a transition, which was which was wonderful. Because you see in in the Eighth Doctor, Sylve, uh, Sylvester McCoy making making a, a brief appearance, yeah. just enough to get killed and regenerate. That's uh, what happens when you come to America? Uh, there you go. There you go. Um, yeah, sure. uh, but but and then he eventually became the War Doctor, and he just really put everything together. So that was that's become very integral to this. Um, what did you find? A, 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 an interviewer friend of mine always has the question, "What have you learned about yourselves?" So I'm asking you both. You, you've now been to you've now been to the sea of it. I, I think about Star Trek, and when Zachary Quinto took over uh, being uh, Mr. Spock, I remember there was a story. Leonard Nimoy turned to him right before they they went into a convention, and he said, "Are you ready for this?" He says, "Ready for what?" And then the elevator doors opened, and they were at a Star Trek convention. So I, I now I now ask you both. You have now been through the who the Hooniverse. Um, what have you learned? What's what have you come away with from it? Well, I really like Whovians and the Doctor <laughs> Who fandom. I think that I come away with that. I mean, we've met so many wonderful and amazing and supportive people, um, and you know, we've been making this film for several years now. And so they've genuinely become friends or we've become like the the convention goers in many ways, because every year we've been saying hello to people. And so, you know, you you become a part of that whole family. I, I guess that that's kind of like our, our thesis of, you know, yeah. you find your community, then they become your family, right? Um, so I think it's really been wonderful. Um, I, you know, it's the show was something from my childhood and carries nostalgia. And now it just, it's actually being a part of this world in some sort of pop culture way as well. I think it's fantastic. It's like every time mm -hmm. you see someone with a TARDIS keychain or earring or something, it's like, oh, okay, you know the show. Um, and you're, you, you become just immediately a part of this greater fandom universe. And I think Understood like, oh, yeah. completely. Yeah. You've got it there. Right there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Matthew, you yeah. are the memorabilia I, for it, please. I, pardon? You are the memorabilia. You are looking for a yes. trick. You are the memorabilia. Okay, so I learned that about myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, I, I, I've learned, I think this, the, the important thing is that the, the power that the audience has, the balance between um, the audience um, and, and the art or the, or the show, if you like, the audience contributes as much to the show as the showmakers do. And I think it sort of corrected that balance for me, probably before I started um, this documentary, I was very much of the opinion that there are the creators, they make the show. 
it's their show and then there's the fans over uh -oh. there and yes yeah. that's that's kind of where i was um uh, because i'd been involved in so many of these franchises and i but i'd never really gone out um and saw and felt what it was like to be there in the audience do you know what i mean and then as that happened i said well really what's important is the audience um and the and what the audience brings to a show and even more important than the show itself is the way the audience relates to itself and that's what we really got i think as we explored these conventions was a sense of this community um uh, and that the community is really more important the the, show. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. And I, I see that all the time with comic books. I see that with all fantasy and, and horror and science fiction. I see the, the, the it takes a village, if you yes. will. Yes, um, it really does. The audience, and I, I very much now when I'm teaching, because I teach, you know, or when I'm writing, you know, and I'm keeping going with, with my own stuff, um, I'm very much more aware now of how much the audience is helping me tell the story or helping the writer tell the story so the audience will fill in that bit how many times have we sat in front of a tv show and we suddenly become we become very aware of the questions we're asking the screen in a way why did you do that what are you doing there what are you doing there? those questions that dialogue that's going on in our head as we watch the watch the tv that that's the lifeblood of keeping something entertaining if those questions aren't there, we get bored. We go find some popcorn. We go make a cup of tea. It's it's a real it's a real um, it's it's so in short, making Doctor Who am I has woken me up to the Doctor Who are we of the of the of the um, of the overall thing really. If you had to, and I have two questions for you. I'm going to go for my second one first because you sparked it. If someone turned to you now and said, "Okay." write a new Doctor Who for us. I think what? Vanessa could write a better Doctor Who than me these days, <laughs> to be honest. Um, she's, she's, uh, she's got, a, a, you know, a handle on sci-fi and has probably a better handle on it than I do. I, I probably want to write something about, you know, my dad or, or, or about, you know, the weather. But, but it's, it's a, <laughs> but, but I th I, 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 I'm not sure I would be invited back into the world of Doctor Who unless it was something very specific. Like, I think I could write a good show about the fact that the Doctor is, in fact, half human. So, oh, yeah, that would be controversial. People would, like, love that. That would be, like, the, the episode that people decide, you know, did that episode really happen or did it not happen? <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's, it's a real issue. And, and, and uh, you know, the is he or isn't he is something that's very much permeating the, the 12th, the 13th, and the 14th Doctor. What is, his, what is his heritage? I'm glad you said that because, again, you were clairvoyant because we think there were 13 Doctors. No, the, the, the new plot line during Jodie Whittaker's uh, uh, regime, if you will, is that there were thousands of doctors. Right. The doctor goes way back and then there have been many women who have played the doctor. There've been so much. So the fact that, that the doctor could be half human and- yeah, well, There could be a doctor who's half Is it the, the endless child, the timeless child? Thank or, you, yeah, thank where, you. Where, the where timeless we, child. <laughs> I didn't strictly understand that. Um, uh, yeah. Um, it, it went a little over my head. Um, so, but we're really excited because after, um, Sci-Fi Boston, we're, um, we're attending the Gallifrey Convention and oh. we're going to be meeting Chris Chibnall. I've and Jodie Whittaker. Him, and Jodie Whittaker. Oh, that's but We're great. doing a panel with Chibnall. So this will, I, I mean, uh, you know, as a duo, I think we've wanted to be part of the cool kids for a couple of years. You know, we've said, you know, this will help our documentary. <laughs> yeah, the two of us. This will make this that we've been saying, you know, oh, you know, wouldn't it be great if we, you know, if if we were hobnobbing it with the tenants and, and the Jody Whitakers of this world. Yeah. And now that's starting to happen, which is so which is kind of sweet. 
it's it's almost like a family you know the 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 playing field is leveled whether whether you're a distant cousin or or grandpa you're you're everyone (laughs) in this in this world second cousin maybe (laughs) (laughs) did you have um when you when you wrote the doctrine even when you were doing the documentary did you have what i'll call uh, like helicopter parents did you have fans did you have fellow producers stand over you oh you can't say that about the doctor no this is what happens with the doctor i hear that all the time with with marvel superheroes you hear everyone from from robert downey to 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 anyone saying you know oh i have to be careful when i'm playing this role and you talk about people uh, uh, talking back to the television set i i sat there during many a, a, a superhero film during many a doctor who episode whatever and i go uh-huh of course because the santarans and the and, yes. and the cybermen did it did, did you have the helicopter parents when doing? I had operation? Philip Siegel. Philip Philip knew so much more about um, the you know the law of Doctor Who. He'd also been trying to develop it as a series for many years before I came on board. Um, so initially, he was he he was very good. Initially, he let me do my thing. So, and we more or less filmed the first draft, except my first draft was um, more focused, I think, on family and things like that, um, and less on, you know, saving the world. <laughs> um, so, so, so we had to sort of balance that out. Then you're absolutely right. Then we had, but, but it was kind of having a dysfunctional family telling you what to do, because you had Fox, um in 96 which is a network which was very you know they were they'd been making um you know x-files and we had the x-files team te- the technical team of which was shooting in vancouver on x-files locations wow. and then we had bbc who were only putting a million into it um and then we had universal um who were the production company and so with those three elements it was like having kind of warring parents. The, and then there was the director, um, you know, Jeffrey Sachs. But Jeffrey and myself were the people who had to um, kind of mediate all these different things. Including, you know, and Philip, you know, with all the stuff he wanted to do, really, it was his baby. So, I, so yes, in answer to your question, there was a lot of um, answering but, but Philip, like any good producer, um, gave me the space to do Doctor Who Am I, which was, what, which was the pitch that I made to make that TV movie. So, so also in terms of this documentary, I ask you both this, you, you sort of implied this already. Uh, as, you were, as you were filming, did you have fans come running over to you and say, okay, if you're going to mention the doctor, then you need to mention the fact. Yes. Yeah. I think we did, didn't we? Yeah, we, we, we certainly did. Something. There were people who had yeah. their um, own opinions about Matthew and um, it was fun. It was entertaining because it was the first, well, it was the first convention that Matthew had ever, had ever been to. So there are the first Gallifrey one we went to, it was a, uh, People were like, oh, my God, Matthew Jacobs, where has he been? Yeah, um, sure. And yeah. uh, so there were some people who had a, a lot of pent up things to say. Um, but then that was entertaining. But there are lots of people as well who maybe, you know, were like you who said, oh, I love the Eighth Doctor. And the Eighth Doctor is the reason why I was introduced to Doctor Who. So we kind of we had we had both of that and both sides are represented but you know for the comedy and you know for the storyline we certainly show the like the 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 aggressive uh sort of uh fans but even then there was always like a smile on the face so it was always playful banter it never got truly like weird or anything like that but um yeah there are people with strong opinions exactly yeah we weren't coming in from left of field we had a guardian angel on our side in the form of Daphne Ashbrook. Um, and it was Daphne who really introduced us to a whole bunch of the Uber fans. And because she was the one who was saying, here, you know, you meet Matthew and Vanessa and things like that, because they, they, they were, you know, they, they were great. They were, they were, it was like, she has such a, I don't know if you know her, 
um, or seen her at any conventions, Jay. She's, um, she, you know, she played Dr. Grace Holloway and she was, and she's funny and witty um, and, and very much an American. Um, and, and so, so she was our kind of, our, our initial guide. Um, and I think um, that, that, that was a tremendous help. I'm so glad that she helped. I'm, I'm hearing now, I use the term rabid fan and I'm hearing uber fan. I'm hearing uh, these huge expletives when talking about fandom. Now there are, uh, the, the amount of science fiction programs out there are, are, are a galaxy, pardon the pun. Yes. And, but you see that in Star Trek, the fans of Star Trek, there's, there's a certain mentality, there's a certain obsession. And the same can be said for Doctor Who. And there are very few series uh, that, that may have been better produced, better made, better whatever, that don't have that obsession like Doctor Who does. Now, now, that you've, now that you've been immersed in all of this, why? Why are we so crazy about an old codger who took his granddaughter on a ride in a telephone booth to see an angry pepper pot, a <laughs> robot, and a spud-like creature try to all take over the earth for heaven's sake with all of the galaxy. They all just want this godforsaken planet. Why are we so crazy? And why do we lose our minds every few years when the doctor regenerates? Why do we care? Why are we so nuts? Uh, well, I think it's because of the care. Well, so the, the doctor, him, her, itself, um, as a character just promotes just really good values and is sort of the protector of the little guy, you know, he just, he stands up for humanity. He reminds us of the goodness in people. And I think people, audiences can in, identify with that and they want to be like that. They want to emulate themselves as the doctor and take on those characteristics. And it's like, in in the episodes of Doctor Who, it's just the regular uh, anybody, just a regular old Joe or whoever becomes like the savior of humanity. So it's like no matter even if your life is boring or whatever else, you too could actually be swept up into this journey. You could be a companion. You can follow the doctor around on all these things. And it's yeah. unlike Star Trek, where it's a federation, you have this or even Star Wars, where it's like you have you know, these, it's the good guys, bad guys in these sort of, you know, people in armies and stuff like that. It's just not as, I'm kind of not articulating myself correctly, but it's just like, what you're saying it, is right. it you're comes down right. to the individual. Yeah. Really. Yes, it's, it's much more of a, I mean, the show, it, the genesis of the show was a children's show, yeah. was this, you know, so the idea of a pepper pot um, yeah, that sounds great. Um, the genesis of the show was a show that didn't have a Bible um, the, because it was very low budget. And the idea was that, you know, when writers worked on the show to start with, they were given license to do whatever they wanted. So it attracted, very quickly started to attract excellent writers like Douglas Adams, you know, like um, Terry Manchin, you know, all of those, those people were, came on board because they had a freedom. So there wasn't a Bible. There was, there was a freedom to be truly imaginative. And that's the stuff of good science fiction, in my opinion. Science fiction spends a lot of time making rules, but at the same time, the, it does that because there's a, a liberty, there's freedom. Um, when, we, when we start watching a science fiction show, this could go anywhere. That's why we want to watch it. That's why I want to watch it. Um, uh, I want to see a show where half the planet is an engine and the Earth itself is the spaceship, like that Chinese movie that's 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 out. Um, you know, I've there big ideas. Yeah, that's, and that's also so one thing about the Doctor too, he's um because we were doing another podcast and we kind of asked him about what he thought about the Doctor and fandoms and. There is something about the doctor that's like a superhero yes. and you can see he's not a masked superhero like batman but he's like superman but he's more even though he has powers sort of like i mean 
Oh, that'd be an interesting um, showdown. Superman and the Doctor kind of yeah. like taking out the robot. When are they going to cross? Yeah, the sonic it? screwdriver. When are we going to have the Doctor but, get together with the aliens? I know, but the Doctor's um, weapon is is his her mind, right? And using smarts and science in order to outsmart the, the evil person. But the doctor is like a superhero and you want to em emulate the superhero. And superhero the, with a screwdriver. With the sonic gun. screwdriver. And the fact that the doctor changes and regenerates into somebody else um, makes, I, I'm using the pronoun him, but they, it makes him more um, accessible to everyone. Like he can be anyone. And so that's kind of just awesome. The, the doctor isn't pigeonholed into one thing and everybody can find something about this character through all the years that they identify with. It's truly like a genius show in, in that way. And it is, it is as timeless as the Time Lord is. <laughs> Vanessa, you hit some beautiful points about this. And it's always been part of my supposition. I'm I'm thinking of a, a line that David Tennant had in one episode, someone turned to, to him and said, well, how do you know so much about this? He goes, because I'm clever. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say because I'm from Gallifrey and I'm a Time Lord and the world. No, yeah. I, I'm, just, I'm just cool. Yeah. And, and there, was, there was a section that, that brought tears to my eyes when Donna, when his, his, his companion Donna uh, uh, was rendered amnesic because otherwise her brain would explode. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, and and she essentially was off the series. And, and again, uh, David Tennant's doctor turns and said, there are worlds that are singing her praises. She has saved universes that now pray to her and she will never know. And, and really the story of the common man. You know, Isn't that beautiful? I mean, the doctor definitely recognizes and sees people. Um, uh, um, being seen as such a, you know, roguish thing to say, but he sees Grace Holloway in the TV movie. He says, you know, you want to hold back, you wanted to hold back death, didn't you? That's what you, that's what made you want to be a doctor. Um, and it, it hits right into her thing. And that's what he does. And I suppose that's a familial thing. I, I never thought about it. That's the sort of sensitivity that one gets from a brother, a sister, a parent, an uncle, an aunt. Um, you know, those those things are there in Doctor Who because it isn't dominated by action climaxes. There's a lot of running down corridors. There's a lot of explaining. There's all of that. But at the end of the day, what we're interested in is the relationships between the Doctor, the companion, the villains, the you know, the, the antagonists. Um, of th those you were interested in in what drives people and oh, one more one more thing though about the the doctor who fandom we've met uh, people who are a part of start the star trek fandom yes. or you know gosh there are so many and i'm blanking on them and they go to all these different conventions and a common thread that we've been hearing is that but it's the doctor the friends they've made through Doctor Who are the ones that they will call if something is going really bad in their life or they need a friend, they need someone to be there. They're the lifelong friends that they will tra go on trips with or spend holidays together with. And I think that's a very interesting distinction where they're like, oh yeah, it, it's just the sen this strong sense of family it exists in other fandoms, but it trans it, but it transcends into a really deep and last lasting relationship. And I'm like, oh, that's per that is particularly special and interesting. Where we've heard that from many people about specifically the Doctor Who fandom. And my mom actually came to us to Chicago with us to Chicago TARDIS, her first convention ever, and she loved it. She, I think, she was blown away just by the just the energy and the warmth that everyone was bringing where she's just like, oh, you guys are going to go, going to be at Gallifrey in Los Angeles. I'm coming. I'm going to be there. <laughs> she's like <laughs> excited to, to be there again and see the same people and stuff. So there, there is something special about the, the Doctor Who fandom, specifically even American 
Doctor Who fandom. Vanessa, you're hitting something very strong, and and I'm 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 being elucidated uh, at this point. Listening <laughs> to you, um, yes, when when you look at Star Trek, when you look at Star Wars, when you look at the science fiction series. When when someone comes aboard, they oh well, someone from planet Zoron is joined. it's so huge, it's so ceremonial. We can't connect with that. I'm thinking about when um, uh, when Tom Baker invited uh, what was her name? I think it was uh, uh, Layla, the 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 cave Layla, dweller, yes. to suddenly be a partner with him. Jesus and he Christ. never even said, you know, when when she left the series. Actually, when not when she came in, when she left, I remember uh, he didn't even say goodbye. It was just sort of like okay. <laughs> it left, and That's and it. when Rose came on there, uh, again you get you get Eggleston to simply open up the TARDIS door and say, "Want to go?" <laughs> That's right. And That's what it is with a family. You don't suddenly say, "Please join." Or <laughs> no, we we just say, "Hey, what are you doing this weekend?" And yeah. it right. really was like a family member. You're absolutely right, um, Matthew. You hit something also that that blew my mind. Of course. There was never really a script to this. There was never, you know, it wasn't, we're starting the Federation and the Federation and they speak Klingon and let's make sure that when you Jachuk means a meeting in Klingon, you didn't have that with this. Exactly, the, well, there was no Bible. What? I mean, that's, I mean, this, it's interesting that we call TV, we, we say that there are Bibles for TV shows. It's like we're, we're making commandments, we're, right. we're setting down rules. And the shows that don't have such strict Bibles um, let the audience in more, I think. And they also, that you know, so even some, there are some shows that lose their North Star, as it were, like, like Lost, you know, it's in the title, really. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a fantastic show. And, you know, for certainly, for, certainly for like the first three or four seasons, I was going, yeah, I'm loving this, loving this. And as you get, later down, many, many seasons down the road. Yeah, I'm not sure where this is going. Um, and that's lost. probably- yes. I, I love that lost. series. You're, I, I was obsessive with Lost also. And I yeah. accept it, but there was a point where I went, what? Oh, it's another dimension. Okay, got it. <laughs> yeah, that's right, not quite. And, and that's okay. Um, but you see, they had that freedom because I think at some point they must have said, we'll sort it out later. Um, and whereas if we'll you have a Bible, post. we'll fix it in post. <laughs> yeah, we'll sort it out later. And, uh, I mean, I you have that. They, they did that on Farscape of... also. There was there was a, one season they didn't have this particular old woman character, and then all of a sudden there was narration, and so so and so is with us, and they just had a new character. And <laughs> I got such a chuckle out of that. It was like they said, "Well, why is she? Who cares? Just start filming. <laughs> let's 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 do it." And, and there's that kind of, um, and we're just gonna make this, is something that I personally loved and I champion the kind of go and make it kind of philosophy toward filmmaking, especially now. And that's kind of there in the documentary. You know, we, we address the, the fact that we don't wait for permission to, we didn't wait for permission to make this film. Maybe we should have, because we'd have been paid more. <laughs> but we definitely, um, it would definitely, sometimes when you don't wait for permission, it's, it's a risky thing to do. But it's a, it's a rewarding thing to do because you're, it's your thing now. You know what I mean? And that kind of attitude was there, I think, in the birth of Doctor Who because it was such a, um, uh, it was such a dream and so accessible. If you've ever seen that wonderful feature the, docu the BBC made about, um, about the first production, what's it called? A Matter of Time and Space? Um, Adventures in Time and Space. Adventures of Time and Space. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I cried. Yeah. I watched yeah. it twice. I was, I, I was breathless to think that the brilliant idea of regeneration, and this is what I was going to say in terms of the Bible of it, the brilliant idea of regeneration just came because William Hartnell just well, he was getting old. Show anymore. He was. He, he couldn't remember his lines. Right. My dad. So, okay. The reason my dad's part in the in the, in the gunfighters was kind of bigger than, than, than Hartnell's role in that particular um, story was because Hartnell was kind of, you know, having problems remembering his lines. There, there were many moments where it's just like, that go, is. go ahead and sure handle the Daleks. I'm standing here because that was, <laughs> yeah, that was it. It was lovely. I mean, you, it was, I mean, it was very much a different era, but that, that, that film that the BBC made about the genesis of Doctor Who is really worth 
watching and uh you know there's a lot of stuff there and i i found it very funny uh that that william hartnell was obviously he uh he he wasn't he wasn't a fast person so his doctor was much slower and the moment they had patrick Troughton, that's when they suddenly said okay now go run that <laughs> yes. just became another part of the book. that became another part of the bible okay doctor who can run so yeah, run. Run. brilliant right. brilliant um i'm i'm likening your doctor eight to the peter cushing movies in the sense that huh. uh, that it, it changed yeah. the doctor was was almost human in that one so uh yes, yes, and there was a little outcry there so yes so. that's right the cushing well, movies got re-released last year in the uk and the cinemas and did very well well the, for a little while matthew was saying like uh the eighth doctor was the 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 george lazenby of of but james Bond. yeah paul doesn't like that he's, <laughs> he, he, he's, uh, paul, paul's actually very paul mccann who played was, was very was very it's been very interesting bbc um the radio times in the uk which is the big one of the biggest publications really um they've interviewed um paul paul has some interesting stuff to say so if anybody's really interested they should do a dive on like not only did they give us a great review but they did an in-depth series of articles about the tv movie oh. i think their stuff on the tv movie has more information than we have on the tv movie in our in our documentary so so if you really are looking for stuff they've got long extensive interviews with Philip Siegel and Daphne and Eric Roberts and um, Paul McGann. It's worth it's worth taking a dive on to the Radio Times. There's there's a piece of me that thinks uh, in terms of Eric Roberts, uh, the 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 ma he he wasn't. You're not supposed to play the master. You're supposed to play the master. It, it's there, there's there's such a Britishism. Yeah, he was Dr. playing him. He was playing more like a sort of gangster meets a pantomime yeah. hero, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of a weird synthesis. for the occasion. Oh. So, sorry, it, 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 there's no Dalek, it's a Dalek, and there's no master, <laughs> it's a master. That's, I think that's- We great. had to have, we had to have, um, you know, an American star, and he was, he was game, he went to Rada, and he, he understood what Doctor Who is, and so he, he, he sort of, he was a good sport, as they and, say. And we interviewed him. We, we, yeah, we, we it took us a while, but we finally caught up with him. And it was uh, wonderful to spend an afternoon with him and, and his wife, Liza. Um, they're just wonderful. So we do, we do, we, we do have, uh, you know, Eric Roberts in the documentary oh, as well. That's wonderful. I, we I, don't I, talk, we don't really talk to Yee Ji, but that just, just it was just the circumstances really that we weren't able to sort of catch up with him, um, uh, you know. But I was bummed so, about that. Yeah. yeah, it was just sort of like budget timing. I'm so like, as that. Asian American, I'm like, oh, it would have been nice to have, he's Asian can Canadian, but you know, it would have been nice. But that's probably one thing where I'm like, oh, he didn't get EG in there. But Otherwise, it's 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 a fun ride, the documentary. So it's it is what it is. That's for that's for Doctor Who too. Yes. Second documentary. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm starting to fanboy out, and that's embarrassing for me because yeah. I'm finding myself saying, they go, oh, did you see? And I got to be careful of that. Um, so so I'm, I'm going to end with one last question. I'm going to bring us all the way around to some a, a little piece that you had said that we just accept. And we're talking about Doctor Who is a superhero. We're talking about uh, uh, the allure of this character and, and the, the fandom and all of that. Um, do you get a godlike feeling as you look at the character? Because when, if I were to talk to you about a deity that comes from, if I were to say a, 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 a personage that comes from the great beyond materializes in so many forms that are different to so many people and saves the world in a loving manner. Uh, Buddha. And then you say, well, what's the name of, of, of all, all of these stories? Well, you can look for it in his book. Bible. Yes, exactly. Do we see a spiritual aspect? Is that part of it? Do you think that I, I even back here are going, okay, if God if, if there's a God, then hopefully he rides a TARDIS? I think yeah. so. Yeah. I mean, when people talk about conventions as being something new, they're not really. 
um, uh, the effect, the pageantry, the pageant, the passion play, um, uh, the two planks and a passion, you know, the that goes right back to medieval times and beyond. Um, people dressing up as religious characters, going around and reenacting the passion or reenacting whatever religious thing they follow. And it's just the, the you know, TV and, and st st stories have become like a new religion, um, uh, but, but not to the same degree where we have to have witches and, and burn people at the stake. Thank you. Well, we do, we do discuss religion and fandom in, in the documentary. We do, we do. So we have that a, is, that yeah. you, you, you touched on a very, very good theme because we do address it and it's really it's entertaining. Addressed. Yeah, <laughs> it's really addressed in a big way. Um, we have Paul Booth, um, who is uh, our resident expert from DePaul University. He's, he's a, uh, he, uh, you've probably heard of him if you study. He does lots of books on TV fandom and things. And he talks in the documentary. That's wonderful. That's yeah. wonderful. I look forward to seeing this documentary. I look forward to meeting both of you in the flesh uh, at, at the event. Uh, I think Same. it's wonderful that you've done this. I think it's wonderful that you've you've connected this amazing character uh, in a documentary format. I, I remember a uh, last story I'll tell you when I went to see the 50th anniversary episode of Doctor Who, and that was in movie theaters. My, my wife took it, took me there as, as a birthday present. And she knows nothing. She knows Doctor Who. She's seen episodes, but she didn't know enough. So when she was sitting in the audience with 500 insane <laughs> fans and I'm sitting there and something would happen on the screen and go, oh, oh of course, because I'm gallant. <laughs> and, and she would just, and she would go, what's going on? Why do they care? What is that? Um, uh, uh, my, my favorite at that point, uh, uh, Peter Capaldi was about to come into being the doctor and he had the briefest cameo where you just see his eyes and they were calling the roll call because every doctor was there in their TARDIS and then I'm yeah, I'm yeah, I'm yeah, I'm yeah. And then suddenly you see his eyes and you go, I'm yeah. And the <laughs> audience erupted and and it was so funny for me because my wife had had no idea at that point he was the impending doctor. And she just leaned and grabbed my arm and said, who is that? What, <laughs> the, why, who is that? And who, was, what, why? Exactly, who is that? <laughs> and, and what that rooted for me and hearing about this documentary and the popularity you've had with it, that the community is really a community. The community is a friendship. It is a family. It is a joyous event. And you're so right. We are, we are coming into the pageantry. We are coming into the ritual of seeing the doctor ascend and come to us and save our world. Even if it's <laughs> in fantasy. Well, it's kind of, he died for us, you know, not quite, <laughs> but that sort of resurrection is, is very much part of the show. Um, oh, you just blew my mind. Oh sorry. my gosh. Oh, <laughs> incredible. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to quote you. I'm writing a book called Hidden Monsters and it's the parable of, of uh, science fiction and horror films in terms of reality. And oh, the doctor and 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 generation us. Resurrection. becomes resurrection. Yeah, I mean that's it's. It was very funny. I mean, we should wrap up soon, I suppose. But 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 it was very funny. Um, Vanessa was doing some artwork, some graphic work. Somebody was writing about the relationship between Doctor Who and Buddhism, or was oh, it right. Hinduism? And you took this, you took this wonderful illustration, didn't you, Vanessa? Or you took this wonderful illustration of, you know, Buddha and something like that, and you just put, and it actually fits perfectly in there. You put a TARDIS going by in the background. So it looked like uh, an ancient, like, scroll. And like then I kind of, like, made this TARDIS in the background sort of fit the scroll look. <laughs> And it was Uma Thurman's dad, I think, wasn't it? And he's a, yeah. he's a, he's an expert on this, and, you know. It, it, he liked it and then shared did. it somehow. Yeah. yeah, I think we tagged him or something. I, I don't know what happened, but Uma Thurman's dad saw the post and then it was like went around. It was very funny. Oh, that's We've great. Been, I have to look for that. Oh my gosh, that's great. I hope people come in Boston and see our film. They really, it's, you, you really don't have to be um, a Doctor Who fan to sort of be there. 
obviously, if you are a Doctor Who fan, it's going to be delightful and you're going to have a chance to celebrate your fandom. Um, but more than that, if you're interested at all, I think, in science fiction um, and the way it works um, for, for audiences and the way it works for its creators, I think it's Doctor Who and I is, is a, re a rewarding experience. I, I think you're on to something brilliant there as well. I think for the Doctor Who fans, yes, they're all going to sit there and watch this and go, uh-huh, that's right, yep, yep, yep. But or, I, or, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you'll get a level of that. But yeah. yes. it, I, I look forward and I'm going to sit in that audience mm -hmm. and I want to watch everyone watch your documentary and I'm going to look for that 12 year old boy who's never heard of Doctor Who and who's uh, sitting there and watching your documentary and going, how brilliant. And I'm going to weep because, because oh, talk yeah. about time regenerating. I'm going to see myself at 12 once again. It, it has been such a pleasure speaking to both of you. I'm, I'm energized. I can't wait to see the documentary. I can't wait to meet you both at the event. And I can't wait to hear of the absolute uh, uh, exuberance over, uh, over this, this amazing addition to, to the Doctor Who universe that you've provided for us. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Well, for being thank here you. The documentary. Thank, Thank you. you so I can't much, wait Jeff. to meet you. I can't wait for you to yeah. see the documentary and we'll we'll chat more. It sounds like we will be chatting more. You'll yeah, you'll you'll definitely will will be chatting more. I'll be the one holding my plastic doll <laughs> uh, in front of you. Um, All thank right. you both very much. Thank can't you. wait to see you. Thank, Thank you. you.